What's up, y'all? Both Sides of the Barricade, episode 11. And we are talking about the move again from getting off the road, the audience, to being back on the stage and um, being a performer again, being a musician again, and not really getting away from it, uh, away from it but away from just playing uh, as a pure love and passion versus working in the industry. So... In this episode, we're going to finish our coffee, and we're going to talk about the year 2017 uh, when I got off the road again. I think I had just left off that I got in the wreck. Uh, Dave Chappelle was this, uh, the artist I was working with at the time when I got in that second wreck in 30 days. I love Dave, but I, I told him, I said, you know what, you're, you know, the the... The Rick James thing that everyone knows you for is not the uh, uh, totality of who you are. And and he understood what I meant. I, I could drive, but I'm not a driver, you know. So he could be Rick James to a lot of people, but that's not who he is in total. The um, The way I decided to get back in music was kind of interesting. I was, again, living in DeLand, and my brother's friend had a restaurant down the street. And there was a deal cut where I told him I would just come into his little cabaret lounge. It's like a um, you know bar with a small stage. And they chose, you know, I think it was blues music, but I was just playing bu blues music. I, I was just you know, keeping time as a drummer. Now, people looked at me like a calf at a new gate, again, or, or some people were actually just, you know, they loved it. They're like, wow, I've never seen a drummer before, but this is great. And really, all I was doing was just playing to whatever they had over their, you know, house sound system, um, playing along with it. I didn't produce, make any music, I just drummed. This was a good way for me to get my skills back. Um, I'll tell you about the deal, though, because this is where bartering comes in to play. <clears throat> when I say I moved to Delan, I really didn't have anywhere to move, live to. So the deal I made with this restaurant, um, who had, the owner had a building down the street on downtown that they were also getting ready to use for future business, and it had a top apartment, like a college apartment, given I was in DeLand, which is where Stetson University is, I was literally in like a college dorm room, just a bathroom, no kitchen. I had to bring in a fridge, um, you know, decorate the whole place, but basically I was in a loft where I could set my drums up and would play all day long. I mean, the, the deal was I played at the restaurant Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, did three to four hour sets, y'all know the usual, and that covered my room and board at that apartment down the road, and it also, check this out, I got food the days that I worked. Now, I would take home food, put it in the fridge, cook it later, I'd have, you know, five days worth of food off of work in three days. Um, I was making some tips, but really... I, I had no major expenses, so what I was dealing with was, you know, living off a little bit of savings while I'm learning to play again, and that's really what I was doing, is I was playing it down the street, cart my drums a couple blocks, I think it was, to land that little strip, it's like one little half row in New York City in Soho area, like a real downtowny kind of feel, just that one strip, and... It was really neat to live there because I could walk, do everything. I could grocery shop. I could go to venues. I could go to bars. I'd go get breakfast. I'd go get pizza. I could go any the bank, any kind of store, anything I needed. Um, and mind you, mind you, I chose to get off the road. And I chose to quit driving and sold my vehicles, everything. I, I, I was going bare bones back to music and leaving the tour world behind. Uh, this restaurant gave me that room and board, like I said, for the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday gig. 
if they asked me to play any more gigs, like say a Saturday or Sunday, they would pay me. And, you know, getting to play, let's see, I, I got off with Dave, so February, All-Star, I did February, March, April, three-month contract, right? I mean, if you're in Florida in those months, you know how beautiful it is. You have, you know, the perfect weather. It starts to get hot in April slash May. The beginning of April, a friend of mine calls me, and he's helped me out in the past. I mean, I think he helped me build the, uh, the big slash sandwich board, the chalk one that I did to advertise what I was doing inside the restaurant. You know, it was just basically live music along with, it was dinner music, right? And as a drummer playing lightly, you're just tapping into everyone's biorhythms and putting people in sync. And you see people start tapping their hands. You see people start tapping their feet. And so I got to do that for a few months. Also practice down the street. And, you know, my, my, my love for drumming was never gone. But boy, I'll tell you, when it's your instrument, it's your instrument. Um, I remember practicing one day above the loft there, you know, above, above the... The downstairs was going to be a business. They never turned it into a business the, the months I was there. So really I had this whole house to myself, but I kept upstairs. I had my own entrance outside, own mailbox. It was like a B apartment if you were in AB in the same building. And um, I looked across the street one day and I see this guy recognize, he's sitting on the bench right by the Bank of America. I see he recognized that there was drums around. And I see him tap his head and, you know, I'm... I'm playing, there's a sidewalk below me for people that are and or walking. They looked up all the time to see if they could look in the window to see what was going on. Um, I padded the room well. I put these styrofoam tiles up that uh, a friend gave me years prior. And, God, I used them so many times. But, um, I mean, so many times in, like, a studio environment or where I was trying to dampen sound. Excuse me, if you're, if you're having coffee with us this morning, please go ahead. It's also raining outside, so it may be another long one. <clears throat> Where were we? So, the apartment. The guy's across the street, sitting at the Bank of America. I'm up there playing drums, and I start to lull him into a sleep. Because I'm playing such a regular pattern, regular beat, and, and even, you know, time that this guy literally starts to nod, puts his neck in his chest, and he's out. Two, three minutes. I mean, then I have to stop because I, what am I going to do? Just continue to play, let this guy sleep. People are going to see him on the street, sleep in the middle of the day, wake him up. Hey, buddy. You know, the drums. You know, he blamed it on me. Well... <clears throat> My buddy that I told you was helping me make the sandwich board calls me one day and he says, Hey, do you want to go to Sarasota with me? I'm going to look at a sailboat. And I was like, sure, that'd be fun. He's like, I'm not sure if we'll be back tonight. You know, it may take a day or two, blah, 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 trailer, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. I don't gig again till Wednesday. So I, this was over the weekend, I think, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, perfect days for me. And, um... We get to Sarasota to look at this boat, and he finds out that the trailer is basically a yard trailer. He wants the boat. It's like a 25 McGregor, but he doesn't need the trailer because the trailer's not in any shape to put on a highway and travel back to, you know, the east side of Florida. Sarasota, if you're not familiar, is on the west coast. We were coming from the east coast near the land, which is 20 minutes from Daytona Beach. So we're taking a trip. Um... We had to find a trailer before he could get that boat. So not only that, he was thinking, well, maybe I'll just buy another boat, you know, see if there's another 25 McGregor around with a trailer that, you know, in the area. So running all day, we get to Apollo Beach and we see this McGregor that's not in any good of shape. Um, he wants the McGregor in Sarasota. So he's like, man, now I've got to find a trailer. But as we're walking out, we see this boat with a sign on it that says, free. What a free sailboat. What does that mean? We go up, we look at it. It's not too bad. You know, it's big and beamy. And the, there's a number on it. We call it, can't get anybody. 
so then we asked this guy across the way, who's a real gentleman, he starts to help us with anything. I mean, he was giving us information on the marina and why that boat's even for sale, not even just on the guy. But what it is, is this marina was going from a liveaboard to a working marina. All the boats that were there with people on it living had to leave. Uh, the guy who owned this boat had two boats already on the dry um, at that dock that he was working on. This one was in the water. He was leasing to the night security that was there over the dock area, marine area, watching boats. He leased it to him, rented it to him for a certain amount of money because it was in a liveaboard slip. Well, now that it's no longer liveaboard... Uh, they're not having a night security, and the night security is going to have to move along, and the guy's got to do something with the boat. And the gentleman's telling us that he just wants to get rid of it because he's got two already on the hard that he's dealing with repairing. Well, we finally get a hold of the guy and uh, decide to come meet the guy, I believe, the next day. So we're working on the trailer that night. Um, actually, no, we were working on the boat. We were waiting to get another trailer the next day. We were going to a trailer shop to buy a trailer. Um, that's the day we ended up talking to the guy who owned the free boat. And a long story short, I ended up agreeing to take the boat and live on it, you know. And, and uh, because it was on the West Coast, I was thinking, well, should I, you know, get my buddy here who's trying to bring a sailboat back to the East Coast by trailer, should I get him to help me sail this boat? This is not a trailerable boat, uh, per se. It's a big, beamy boat. Um, you know, just... It, it doesn't have a swing keel like his, so it's kind of meant to stay in the water unless you're planning to do a big, big move. Um, so do I get him to help me take it back east through the passage, or do I move myself to the West Coast and do music on the West Coast? And I had three weeks to figure that out because May 1st, Mind you, this boat had to be gone. So we, uh, we got the title from the guy, took over the boat, took possession. My buddy actually kept it in his name, A, because he was the captain. I was really just learning. I had no clue. He'd taken me sailing like twice. I had no clue what I was doing. Um, so he's going to help me do all the things I need to do to the boat to get it moving, get it going, uh, because I've been sitting in that marina for a few years. Uh, fast forward a few weeks, I go back with him to get the boat. We've uh, now got the engine up and running. We took it with us prior, so he had it those few weeks. We worked on it, got stuff going. I basically was paying him to fix the stuff because he was handy like that. And, you know, you got to cater to people's strengths. Um, I would have broken a lot of things and spent a lot more money. So I was just like, all right, help me get into this home, make it you know, at least livable for me. I had to have them build some stairs. We put an AC in, a um, lot of stuff. But um, I ended up wanting to put that boat in Blind Pass Marina, which is not too far from the restaurant where my friend used to play music with uh, a mutual friend of ours that we both know. And he knew the owner of that restaurant because they used to book them. So it's like, we're hanging out with that owner of the restaurant. I'm getting information about, like, the marina that's down the street. You know, I tell him, hey, I'm going to be moving here soon. Book me, blah, 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 blah. Book me doing what? Playing with background music? That's all I was doing at that time. So I get to uh, decide now what, what I'm going to do when I get there. And I live across the street unbeknownst to me from a bar that was hosting an open mic one night and a um, blues jam the other night the passage about the boat is a long story uh it, it, it we were fraught with some crazy stuff at 1 a.m and um and a drawbridge not responding so i'm not going to tell that whole story i am going to tell you this part though when i first docked before I moved into my into the marina I was at a friend of a friend of a friend's dock in Pasigrill beautiful home they allowed me the water uh, the power and they had an outside shower so for two weeks while I was waiting on the marina to open where I could put my new sailboat that I'd gotten for free now put a few grand in it to get it up to snuff 
I um I may have no I went halves with them so yeah I only put about 1500 in it and then bought them out in the end so because we didn't know who's going to take possession of the boat um, and yeah he ended up back with it after I was in it two years the uh, the marina couldn't move me in for a few weeks so again I was down in Paso Grill and the night that I went out was May 5th 2017 so I had uh, it took us a few days to get from May 1st over there trust me we had problems 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 engine problems the drawbridge problems I mean we're having to like kill day and a half in what should have been an afternoon trip I finally get settled in the first night I go out May 5th Cinco de Mayo I call this um, not cab but I call the island hopper that the owner of the restaurant told me to call and I get this lady named Lisa picking me up from this beautiful home in Paso Grill. And I quickly had to tell her, no, I'm in a little sailboat in the back. I'm just moving here. I don't live in this home. She takes me, um, you know, into town. I told her I was a musician. And she's like, well, what, what do you play? I said, well, I play drums. She's like, oh, well, I got to take you to see Billy Agins. This guy is the best on the beach. And everyone loves Billy. And he's a drummer. And I'm like, well, was he by himself? She's like, yeah, he's just solo. He, he's a singer and drummer. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. I don't, I don't, I can't even, like, think of other singer-drummers that do their own thing, uh, but I'm sure they're out there, just rare. So I get dropped off Cinco de Mayo 2017 before I'm living in my marina, and I see what is something that I've got to learn how to do. I mean, this guy's doing it. Why, why the heck... And, and she tells me what he makes because they're friends. And I'm like, goodness gracious, this guy is a big draw. Man. From there, I started finding ways to get into music. I got into an open mic. I got into a blues jam. I got into a blues band. I played in a duo. I played in a trio. Um, I played in another trio. I played a New Year's Eve gig. I was drumming and finding every way I can to get in that music scene. And on New Year's Eve uh, of going into 2018 I sang my first and drummed my first live uh, songs with a band um, I had just did a month and a half of karaoke live karaoke at a bar um, you know it took me from May 2017 to November of 2017 to do my own thing but in that time again I played in open mics I played in blues bands, I played in trios, I played in duos, I backed people up, and then I figured out, you know, I'm going to do this by myself. Now it's time.